Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. So I know you guys have been really excited for a new episode on the e-commerce series. And I've been really wanting to make more content for my channel recently. I just haven't really felt the vibe in a couple days. So yeah, I just haven't really made a video because I've just been adjusting, coming back to my setup. And I was on, I was traveling for a while. But yeah, I think I'm pretty ready to do a new video. I have my MacBook out right now. And as you can see, I have our e-commerce app set up right here. And everything's looking pretty good since the last time. We have this like cart page that we can go and add items into the cart, just like that. Pops up in the cart and then our cart page is now updated. And if we want to remove from the cart, we can do that as well. So we have a like a pretty well working e-commerce app right now. I'm pretty happy with this. But there was a few comments that I received about like new updates. They were asking for user accounts. So I think I had two different people asking about adding user accounts to the e-commerce app. And I do want to cover that. So what I mean by user accounts is like the person who's looking at your store, you want them to be able to sign in and maybe they can store their cart on the user account so that it's like you can go back and you see that you still have your cart but also past orders so when you do something like you actually buy the shirt we would want to store that onto a user account if the user suggests that or if they choose like to sign in before they purchase you know the product and there's some other things that we could probably do like styling upgrades for example i don't like this white box area around the stripe form I've noticed that I've been putting these in all of the episodes and it works if you have a white background, but if you have a different background, I want to figure out how I can get this to show up like in some way that will match the background that we have. So let's get right into this. So for user accounts, there's actually a few different options you can do for user accounts. You can use a gem, which I think is what we're going to do in this video, or you can also just build your own user model and do the authentication with your own routes. And actually, there is a new addition to the Rails library, which is added into the main, uh, like the main branch on GitHub of Ruby on Rails. And what that means is it should come out in the next version. The next release should include this. And it's actually a generator that allows you to generate all the things you need for user authentication. And it also gives you a sign-in route in your app. So that's pretty cool, but uh, I haven't really messed around with it enough to feel confident to use this in this video. So for now, let's just use Devise. And then I even have a Devise Tailwind gem that I created, which will style the login pages to look nice. And we're actually already using it, I think. Because if I remember right, we had an admin sign in. Yeah, look, so we're already using Tailwind Devise and we're using Devise, but we're just using it for admin. Wait, what was the password? Now I totally forgot. I feel like I did something stupid, like... Oh, now I can't remember. Okay. Well, it doesn't really matter. I don't need the admin account. Right? We're just going to add in regular accounts. And then we can worry about the admin part later. Alright, so to do that, since we already have device, uh, let's... Actually, let's double check and make sure we have device. So let's do code dot we're going to open up our e-commerce app inside of our code editor so i'm using visual studio code editor and we can just see where we last left off so i think the last thing i was doing was working with turbo streams making it update the cart and the add to cart button so that looks good i'm just going to close all these open tabs real quick and let's head over to the gem file i just want to verify that we have the device gem Right, we do have the device jam right down here. So if you don't have device in your app, you're going to want to do that by just doing either in the console type bundle add device, or you can just add gem device into gem file and then run bundle. So just make sure you have device. And then what we're going to do is, well, there's also a step to do like a real G device pull and install. But again, we already did that in our app. But if you're on like a fresh app, then you'd want to do that right now. Just so you guys know. 
All right, so all we have to do, since we already have the vise, we already have the generators run, we don't have to worry about that. All we need to do is generate the model. So we'll do a Rails G device, and then we'll put the name of our model, which for us, it can just be called like user. And then that's really it. We can add more attributes onto this later with like more migrations. So let's just do this simple command to start. This is going to generate the user model through device. Now, if you see what it does, it adds a row for the users. It adds the model. It even adds tests, which I haven't messed with tests, but I have been getting a lot of requests to do tests. All right. And it also adds a migration. So of course, if we have a migration, we're going to have to run rails db migrate, which should migrate that. And we'll have our newly created user model. Just like that. We created the table users. We added an email. Yeah, that looks good to me. So now what we can do is inside of our app. Uh, let's reload. I think the server's still running. So I guess my terminal is kind of zoomed out. So I'm going to try to keep that zoomed in for you guys. All right, so now back in the browser, if you go in the URL and go over to users slash sign in, just like this, we should be able to find the sign-in page for the users. It looks like we got an error. Undefined method, new registration path. For resource name. Okay, that's weird. Um, so it looks like there was an issue in our views. The device views for some reason. In the shared links, we're trying to do like the registration path, but it's saying it doesn't have that. Like it's not able to find that route. All right, so let's go and double check the routes to RB and make sure nothing went wrong. So we have device for users, we have device for admins. I'm gonna try to put device for admins at the top. Although I don't think this is gonna affect anything. Oh, you know what we have to do? We have to restart the server because we did the generator on one tab and that added the routes, but our other tab with the server was still running, which means it doesn't know about the new routes. It has no idea. So all you have to do is stop the server and then restart and that'll fix that issue. All right, so now we're going to reload. And boom, we shouldn't see any issues on this page anymore. All right, so now we have the login page for the user accounts. It looks something like this. And of course, we could think about styling this a little bit more. Right now, I can't even tell that it's like a user sign-in versus the admin sign-in, except for in the URL. So I'm going to see what I can do about that. Let's just go into our device uh, views. By the way, if you don't have these, we generated these in the last episode. So there's a command to run. Rails G device colon views. I think it generates the views, but I created a custom gem, which is Rails G tailwind underscore device colon views. And you add this by doing a bundle add tailwind underscore device. So add the gem, then you could do my generator and it'll add the tailwind views. So it's kind of like a useful little helper to just get it started with tailwind. But obviously there's still things that I want to address like login, how about we say login as, and then we can use some of those Tailwind helpers like resource name. Now we can have like a customized text. So if we reload the form, now it says login as user. And of course, if we went to like admins page now, so the admin sign in, it would say login as admin. And that's at least a little bit like easier to understand now. So if we're going to log in as a user, we'd want email password. Well, what if we don't have an email password? We could go and create one on the sign up page. So I'm just going to create a new user with like some random email address. Sign up and just see how that feels. Okay, so look, I've signed up as a user. This is pretty awesome. So now I have a user account and there really isn't anything specific for users right now. 
we might want to get started with that. Like maybe have a little drop down up in the nav bar where you can see some stuff about your account and like you can also sign out because I want to test with a few different user accounts. So I guess that's the first thing I should add. Maybe even just a sign out link could be the first thing. So let's do that by going to going back in the code. And I'm going to head over to the views layouts and the nav bar partial. So that's where we had everything in our nav bar. It was just a really simple nav bar. We have our cart right here. It's being pushed to the side with the justify between. So I think what I'll do is I'll add a div around this link. And then inside the div, I'm just going to do if current user. So we're going to do a check. And then inside of this conditional, I'm going to just do a link to sign out. So if there's a current user, then it will give you a sign out link. And this will go to destroy user session path. And I'm going to have to use the data turbo method delete to make it trigger a delete request instead of the regular get request for a link. And if I reload, we'll have our most simple sign out link, although I can't even see it. That's crazy. Uh, let me see. Okay, on the div, let's add a class of flex item center gap to and then on our sign out link, let's just give it some styling. So the very basic styling could just be like a lighter text color. And now we see we have the sign out link. If I were to click that, boom, we just get automatically signed out. All right, that's cool. And then we might even have want to have like the sign in link there too. So for this conditional, we could say like if current user, we're going to have the sign out link. Else we could put a nice sign in link or even like sign up, sign up or log in. Let's just do a login link first, which will go to new user session path, just like that. And then as far as styling it, it's still going to be like really ugly. So let's just do some styling. Let's add a background color. What type of background color should we use? Maybe for now, let's just try like a gray, PG gray 500, text gray 100, rounded large padding two. So that'll give us a little bit of button type of styling. We reload, we can see what that looks like. Yeah, so just a very simple button. <laughs> it says login. And then right next to it, we could even have another link. It's like sign up. This is going to go to new user registration path. So you'll notice how these device helpers kind of work. They use the same, like the same sort of naming conventions for session path, registration path. It just depends are you creating a new one or are you destroying it? And these are kind of like Rails conventions anyways, so it makes it kind of easy to work with. Right, and for the sign up, I don't know if we want to have a button around this, because usually when I see sign up links in the nav bars on like, websites that I go to, there's usually one of them has a background on it, and the other one is just like a regular link. So I think this one will just be a regular link. I could even make it a little bit larger. And let's reload the browser, see what that looks like. Yeah, now we have login, sign up. And this is kind of what we're going for anyways, right? With the user accounts. Now I want to make some space between these links and the cart now. Because it looks like there's just not enough car there's just not enough space. So to do that, I might just put another div around our links. Just like this. And then on the top level div with the gap, we can just increase that from two to like four, should add a little bit more space. Maybe we'll do six just to be safe. All right, so now we have login sign up right here. We have cart right here. You know what, everything looks kind of good. Although there could be a little bit of space between these, but I almost don't hate it. it seems like they're just nice and like cozy there. I almost want to reduce the margin between the icon and the title because that looks a little bit jarring now. So that's up here on our link where we have gap four. You might just want gap one, which I think that's just like default gapping. Yeah, you know, I think that looks pretty good. A little bit less space, but more of like a cozy setup. And now this allows us to look, log in and sign up. 
So we might even want to have this like as user part on the sign up page too. I don't know. Obviously we could style that page to be like way more exciting. Let's go over to that new uh, registrations new inside of the device folder. And I'm going to add our addition. So sign up as and we'll print the resource name. Try to zoom in here. I guess that's fine. So sign up as resource name. It'll allow us to also have that like definition of what we're signing up as on the page. So we're logging in as a user and we can also sign up as a user. This is pretty exciting. Although we still don't really have a reason to log in like on the app because you can go, you can add the cart, you can buy now. There's not really a reason to really log in. But maybe we'll we'll add that reason. For example, on the cart page, we might have an option to sign in to save the cart. We could do something like that. So I think someone was asking, how can I associate cart sessions to users? So let's go ahead and do that now. So in this page, we don't have a we don't have any user signed in, but we do have a cart, right? A cart. I think it also has like some unique ID. I don't really remember how we did it, but we can look at the model. So let's go into our code, head over to the app models folder, and we can look at the cart. So the cart does have a secret ID, which gets set when you, basically when you create a new cart, which I'm not sure when we create the cart. Is that just in the application controller? Yeah, look, we're actually setting, we're creating the cart. If there's not a cart ID, we're just gonna automatically create one and then set that secret ID into the session. And that's how we're able to like pull up the user's cart. Cause then when we check it again, we would pull it out from session and we would find it by the secret ID, just like this. Now, this might not be something that we wanna do in the long run, we might want to move this else code into somewhere more specific, like when you're creating, you know, when you actually are going to create the cart. I was thinking about this before because I remembered like I, I had added this code in where it would automatically create the cart. Now, the thing about this is if you go into your Rails console, we're probably going to have a ton of carts. So if we did like a cart.count, we have five different carts. And yeah, these might all be from the same user. So like every time they come back, the session data would already probably be cleared because I think this is only temporary. Like storing it on the real session, it's just gonna be that one, like that one time you're accessing the website and you're messing around. That session doesn't last for a long time. I don't know the specifics. I'll probably have to dig into it. But what I do know is we just be creating like a ton of carts. So your database would get swamped up with carts that don't even have items. So I was thinking I kind of want to move this code out of the else. So inside of this check, we could just say if there's a cart ID, then we set the current cart. Fine. Otherwise, we don't do anything. Now, how would that affect things? It might actually affect things if we were relying on the cart for some reason in different places. But I'm thinking we shouldn't have to do that. Now, if we go over to the carts controller, I think this is where we could handle things like that. So inside of the cart controller, well, we're, right off the bat, we're trying to set off the current cart, cart items create. We might even want to do that right down here. We say, if not current cart. <laughs> so if there's no current cart, then we're going to set it, cart.create, and we're going to set the session you know, secret ID. Now this should work. It should only create the cart once you have added an item to the cart, but I don't know how that's going to affect our whole app. So let's reload and see what happens. We might see an error. We might not. It looks like I still have some items in my cart. So I think the best way we might want to test this because we still have the session. So we're not going to be able to test with a new session, how it would react. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to incognito. So to do that, you just click on these dots, go to new incognito window. 
go back to our app on localhost 3000. And as you can see right away, we have this uh, issue, undefined method secret ID for no. Now that's because that cart link, uh, we don't have a cart ID, so we're not able to go to this cart path to get the secret ID anyways, which I think that might've been a bad way to do it because why do we need to put a secret ID in the URL anyways? Why couldn't it just be like slash cart and then we pull up, you know, from the session data, you don't need to expose that in the URL. So I think the way that I coded that originally was kind of flawed, although it works, it just seems unnecessary since we already have the cart ID inside the session, which we can pull up at any point in our Rails app. So why do we need to do it through the URL as well? We don't. So let's refactor that real quick, guys. So to do that, I'm going to start in the routes.rb. I'm going to come in here, look around. So we have this resources carts. We have a show action. Let's just delete that show action. We don't want that anymore. And instead, let's go right next to it. Let's do a resource singular parts only show. So with the resource singular, so as you can see, it's resource instead of resources. By using resource, it's not going to expect an ID on the show action. It's just going to expect like slash carts. Well, I guess we should name it slash, we should just call it resource cart. So in the URL, it's just slash cart instead of slash carts. And let's take a look at that. I mean, I think that should work right off the bat. We're still going to see the error over here if we reload. It might even have a different error. Okay, it's just saying undefined method secret ID. So let's go and change that. So where that code is, is it's inside of the nav bar. So let's come in here, go to the app folder, views, layouts, and go to the nav bar partial. And right down here, we have the link to cart path. I think all we have to do is just delete the secret ID from passing that in and just go to link to cart path. And now it should work just like regular. Let's reload and look at that. We can go to cart path. If I click on that, it actually brings us to the cart path. But now because we're doing this check, if current cart cart items, I think we're going to have to add a safety operator there. So I'll show you what that means. So inside the views carts folder on the show page, we're trying to access all these things off the current cart, which we don't have right now. We haven't created that cart until you add your first item. That's kind of how it works, I guess, right now. So on the cart page, we're like checking, is there any items? And then we show this. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a safety operator on here. So a safety operator just means this and sign. I guess it's called like an ampersand or something. I don't even remember. Ampersand. So from the Latin word meaning and. Okay. You guys have probably seen that before in coding. But this is how you add a safety operator. You do it right before the dot. So like right before the function call for like dot any, you just put a safety operator. And then what it does is it catches any errors and it just returns no. So now if we reload, we would no longer see that error. But this conditional isn't big, isn't good enough because it's, we're also showing like checkout now, which is relying on the cart on the secret ID, which we probably don't even want to have checkout now until you have enough items to check out. But also, why do we need to pass the, again, why do we have to pass the secret ID into the checkout cart path, right? That doesn't even make sense because we already have it in the session. <laughs> so let's try to remove some of these, some of like the IDs that we're passing in. I guess the product ID here does make sense on the cart path for remove from cart. But let's see what we can do about this. So let's go to routes.rb. I'm trying to remove that secret ID from the URL. Uh, so that's, I guess on here on the create and destroy, I think create should be fine. Hold up, carts controller create. Yeah, we're not doing anything crazy inside of here. We are setting the product. So we're expecting a product ID. And destroy. I guess we're actually expecting the product ID, but also 
the cart ID. So let's just remove that destroy and let's put it on the resource. Maybe that'll work. Reload. It says so for checkout now it says no route matches. Checkout missing required keys ID. So let's go back in here. Oh, right here. So get checkout on member. So I think instead of on member, if we change that to on collection, it's not going to require an ID. We can reload, but it might change the URL. So now it says it, there's no variable for checkout cart path. It probably renamed it to something like carts underscore checkout or something. So we can take a look at that by going into our console, typing rails routes, which will print all of the route helpers in our app. So all of those URL helpers, uh, we can look through here. We have checkout underscore carts path. So that's what it would be. And as you can see, it would go to slash carts slash checkout, which actually, I don't know, do I want it to go to slash carts or do I just want to use slash cart like singular? I think I don't even want to have carts. So let's just put everything into the singular resource. So we're going to have our create is also on the resource. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this. So I'm going to select this and just move the do up here. And now all of our links are nested inside of the singular row. So it'd be like slash cart slash checkout instead of slash carts, like plural, and then passing in some ID. Cause that's just, that is kind of weird. All right, this is nice. We get to do some refactoring. Let's reload. All right, now we're getting another error about the current cart. So if we go back to that show page, we're trying to render all the products, but if we don't have a, a cart model saved yet, we wouldn't be able to do that. So we need to have another condition on here. I guess just inside of this ID, we could do if current cart dot products any, and we also want the safety operators just in case there's no products. I could just nest this at the end. And there we go. We have the our loop of the products nested inside of a condition, so we can avoid any errors if we don't have a cart. Okay. <laughs> After all that work, this is what it looks like now. It just looks the same, but now it is a little bit more simplified where we're not passing in all of those IDs anymore. If we went to the checkout, that's also gonna like cause some errors now. So we might just want to do something on that checkout page. So like this checkout page, it's going to show the form, it's gonna do everything. I guess we can nest this inside of a condition. So we can say if current cart dot products dot any or actually let's use cart items if cart items dot any let's put all of this stuff including the stripe checkout form whoops i'm kind of losing my place now wait is this it's weird So this is the end of that div, right? And then this is that div. Okay, I see it now. So I was trying to go across two divs at once. I guess just inside of here, you do the end. So if there's cart items any, then we'll render all those items. Else we might just put a like a message. Don't have any items in your cart yet. I guess that's fine and we also have to do the condition around this stripe form down here so say if current cart safety sign cart items another safety sign because well really where the error would come in is right after cart items so we might not even need the safety sign here but we mostly just need it on the cart items dot any because if cart items is nil it would throw an error if it's nil or like empty or I guess yeah it might not even throw an error okay so if we reload now we see this your cart and then we have this little message you don't have any items in your cart yet so that's cool 
It's interesting the tech center isn't applying, but it's because the the stripe form is supposed to be on the right side of the page anyways. That's why the styling looks weird. Now, I don't even know if we'd want to show this to the user. This looks pretty weird. Uh, so let's just go ahead and redirect them in the controller. So let's just do that for now. So on the cards controller, checkout action. How about we do a condition if current cart or items dot if if there wasn't any cart items, I'm gonna redirect to the root path and I'm gonna add. I guess it could it can it doesn't have to be an alert. It could just be a notice. Like you don't have items in cart yet. I don't know if this is too much. But if you reload, oh, we already get the error oh, because we needed those safety parameters. Oh, and I remember why we needed the safety parameter on the cart because what if the current cart is no? All right, so yeah, I guess that's what happens now when you go to checkout. We would just redirect them and say like you don't have any items in cart yet which that's fine we could also do the check right on this page where we could like gray out this link if you don't have any cart items now, i think a simple way you could do that is just by using the disabled attribute so we go back to our cart show page and on this link to check out, we could add disabled and set that to current cart safety sign cart items dot any. Now we actually want the opposite of that. So we'd say not I think. <laughs> I don't even know if that would work actually, because if it's nil, like how would we say not nil? That that wouldn't return anything, right? <clears throat> So current cart cart items, how do we change this to truthy or not? Dot any not equal to nil. Do that check. Okay, let's see how that looks. So it looks like it's not it doesn't look disabled to me. <coughs> Though I don't know if there'd be any certain styling for disabled link. Let's see, let's just try setting disabled to true. Let's see what that does. So yeah, you really can't even tell. I guess it still works the same way. Is there not a disabled tribute on links? I might just be making this up. Hmm. Yeah, I guess there's not really like an attribute for that. So let's forget that. Now, if we did just want to like change the styling, we might just copy this link and then just make it go to nowhere. So we do a check, like the same old check that we've been doing. Check if there's any items in the cart. And then we can do else condition. Or I'll just copy that same link, but then I'm gonna try to disable it by like, I guess it shouldn't be a link. You could change this to tag. So we can use content tag. Div, and then we can put like the content class. I think that should work. But yeah, look, so now it's actually just a link. That's not a link, it's just a div. And we probably want to style this a little bit. So for the one that's the top one is the working checkout. The bottom is like the disabled one. So we could probably get rid of the hover state and then add some sort of like opacity or actually we could just do brightness 75 on the whole link, which will kind of like darken it out. And you can see like the checkout now isn't available. Kind of silly doing so much for such a little button, but that's kind of what I do on my channel. So over here, it says you don't have any items in your cart yet. Maybe we could extend on that message. So right here where it says 
you know you don't have any items in your cart we could say <clears throat> add to check out first add items okay just a simple message so yeah obviously you can't check out on this page because you don't have any items yet let's go and try to add an item see how that works so right off the bat i guess on the add to cart page it's saying that now there's undefined method for carts path because we changed it from the plural to the singular in the routes so let's go over to that products show page and we have to go to the add to cart link so i guess i have that in a partial we have this partial add to cart so i think all i have to do is change it from carts path to cart path the singular if i reload okay now we're not having any issues now if i go ahead and click add to cart boom it adds the item to cart and now i can successfully check out so i'm pretty happy with that one item in my cart as a guest user and if i want to remove it from cart now i don't have any items and you can see like the checkout link actually gets disabled again which is kind of fun if we have some sort of interactive ui in our app which makes it more exciting i guess just adding a bunch of items i want to see how that looks Boom. now i have all the items in the store in my cart this is what it looks like if i want to go check out i can check out price tag is going to be a little bit high but yeah this is awesome so now we kind of spent all this time just styling like these different links, just doing, doing a little bit of UI improvement, but now let's get to the point of the video, I guess, which is adding user accounts. We have user accounts, but there was a few things I want to do. Like I remember on this page, I was just saying, I want to add a link to like log in to save your cart. See, that would be an awesome feature that we could add real quick. And we could even show you like your past cards. You could have like some sort of collection of them. I don't know, but I'm cool with trying to do that right now because I'm on incognito. Like if I were to close this browser, I would lose my whole cart. Like all of these items, maybe I only want like these three items, but that's pretty important to me. And maybe I don't want to buy it now, but I want to buy it like in a few days from now. So that might be a reason to like log in, save your cart, and you can come back and check out when you're ready. So let's go ahead and add that feature in. All right, guys, let's get started with that first thing. I'm just gonna add the link probably at the bottom of our cart items. So that would be on the show page of the cart. And just like underneath these products, we could add like another BR. And then I'm just gonna put the link to sign in to save your cart later and this is just going to go to the new user session path and then for styling just do like text large text gray 100 see what that looks like all right so we have this little link at the bottom of the page sign in to save your cart for later <clears throat> i might do like a border on that border b2 so we're gonna do just a bottom border only so it look like this and also let's do more margin because it just looks like it's kind of like too squished right now we have a br but we can also add like margin top although i don't think margin works on links so instead let's use margin bottom on the products to like push that link down a little bit so i don't know if that's good enough maybe instead of gray let's go for like indigo 400 is that good maybe 600 let's do font semi bold so i just wanted to stick out a little bit more okay that looks good dine in to save your cart for later and then maybe the border could be like an indigo like same color as the text sign in to save your cart for later all right so you click this it would go into the sign in page now, another thing is we need to have a condition here. So we only show this if 
there's not a current user, so say if not current user, right? So there isn't a current user because we're in the incognito mode. So when I click sign in to save a cart for later, I should be able to sign in and then have our cart get saved. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new user. Just a really simple test email address. And boom, we've signed in as a user. So now what I want to do is I want to save that cart like almost immediately. So maybe even in the application controller, we have like the set current cart. We could do something in here. So we're doing like if session current cart ID, we're setting current cart. You might want to also say like if current user and we could do some code here for the current user. So what I was thinking is we might want to have another model, something like cart session, where we can save the cart session on the user and associate a cart to a user. And have like multiple of them. Either that or we could just have the cart directly belong to a user. That's another idea. So like a cart, you know, you can have multiple carts. We could do that. A cart belongs to a user, so we'd have to add a user ID onto the cart. And then a user could have like multiple carts if they needed to, which they might not need to. Or we could do a cart session model, which would associate the two together. I don't know which is better. I honestly don't know which is better, but I guess for now, let's just put it on the cart model. So I'm going to add a migration, adding the user to the cart model. So we'll do a Rails G migration, add user to carts and then user belongs to i think that's fine although we're gonna have to edit that migration to allow you know you don't have to because by default they would require a user in this setup but we want to have say that it's optional so let's go to db migrate and go to the latest migration where we're adding the reference carts user now we have this null false. So what we want to do is say null true to allow that to be, you know, null if there's no user signed in. Okay, and then in the models, we have to do some final things to finish up these associations. So in the user model, you can just say has many carts. And then on the cart model, say it belongs to user. And we also have to say optional true so that it's able to be saved without user. All right, so now if we come in here to our application controller, we can just check if current user, and actually we might wanna do this inside of the check for current car ID. So if current user and current user dot carts dot where ID, Actually, it's the secret ID. Our secret ID equal to our, you know, saved ID. If current user and where dot not. So this is if there's no cart with the same like ID saved. We're gonna want to say current cart or current user. <laughs> Or wait, well, we want to just get current cart and update it. Yeah, actually, I think that's the easier way. We could just say if current user and not current cart dot user, something like that. Then we'll set current cart dot user to current cart dot update. User ID is current user ID, which would save the cart onto the user. Yeah. Or actually save the user onto the cart but you know it works both ways so i don't think we ever migrated this so let's do rails db migrate in the console add our new user relationship onto the cart just like that if we go back in the browser that should have like that reload right there should have saved it should have updated the cart I can't really see it happening in the log, so we can go into the console real quick. Rails C. 
and we can check this out for ourselves. So we do user dot last, or wait, not user dot last, part dot last, and user. You can see that that the last card does belong to a user. All right, cool. So now we have that cart saved. So we have like these three items. I think from here, the only thing that we have to worry about is setting the ID. So like setting the cart so that it doesn't override it inside of the carts controller, which we're doing right over here in the create. We're saying if not current cart, then we're just gonna create one. But we might wanna also first check like if there's a user's saved card, we might set that. Now to test this, since we already have this saved, I think what I'll do is I'll just close the incognito window, right? And then I'll open it again, go to localhost, and you'll see that we're not signed in at all. We don't have a cart, but when I log in, it should bring back that old cart, right? That's what I would hope would happen. Now, I think I forgot the users. Oh, my account. Oh, and then the password was really simple, so I'm able to remember that. Let's try to sign back into that same account. Log in. And as you can see, we have nothing in cart. So that actually is kind of an issue that we might want to address right here. So, you know what? Forget the current cart here. Let's do this inside of the application controller. So we're checking if current cart ID on the session. Now let's do else inside of here. We can check if current user and current user dot carts dot any. So if that is true, then let's just set the current cart ID. First of all, let's set current cart equal to current user dot carts dot last. And then we can set the ID to our current cart dot secret ID just like this. So this little else check right here would be what what sets the cart ID off the user once you sign in again. So let's see what happens if we reload. As you can see, our cart is still here. You have three items in your cart. And you can see like as I can sign out, no items in cart. I can log in again. Actually, that's kind of that's kind of interesting. Actually, because the session shouldn't change, we should still have that cart ID. But it's interesting. And if I sign in again as that same user, I forgot what his email was. It was like a pretty random email. Let's see, user dot last dot email my account at g <laughs> sign in so yeah we signed in immediately we have our cart right here but it's interesting that when you sign out it removes the cart that's kind of something that i wouldn't think about because we're setting it right here current car id unless like something with device just deletes the whole session when you sign out i wonder if that's what happens it's interesting. Anyways, that works for me. Like whatever's happening, I think that that works pretty good. Because as a user, you can sign in to save the cart. Or you cannot. Like right here, I have two items in my cart. I'm not signed in. But if I wanted to like just sign up, I think it would automatically save the items on my account. So let's go ahead and create our new user account. Boom, just like that, we have our two items. And then if we just sign out, we lose our items, which that is kind of weird. It's interesting how that works. Okay, let's reload. Let's find that new guy, new guy at fun.com. Even we can go in incognito and test this out even more. So we signed in in a whole new location and we still get our cart right back just like that. I feel like I'm pretty happy with this. The last thing might be saving like the purchases on the account. So we don't have anything like that right now. We're saving the cart, but we're not saving purchases. So I haven't even really gotten to the purchase step. 
but let's say like one of our users decides to actually check out their order, their two items. Now I'd want to handle that. So I can't remember, are we using webhooks in here? Did we ever, I don't think we ever added webhooks. That's actually a pretty big thing that I'm going to add. Uh, looks like we don't have any webhooks. We have a carts controller, we have a checkout action, and then we have a success action. And inside of the success action is where we're like showing that you purchased it successfully, but we're not doing a webhook to double check and like update a status or anything, which is what I usually do. So I'm probably gonna wanna add that. 